Good morning, everybody. My name is Juan Andres Tello, and I work for SKIM. I'm the director of the U.S. office, and the company is headquartered in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam. Today, I'm going to be talking about product portfolio and revenue optimization uh, for CPG, and I'm going to share some, some of our past experiences in this area. The outline for today, uh, I'll start off with the motivation for revenue optimization, then we'll talk into what's the concept of ROIs, uh, what, it, what are the requirements for market research function? And it's basically a shift from insight to foresight. Uh, then we'll get into what are the building blocks of an RO system. Um, so I, and I'll go through those in detail. Then we'll look into some of the revenue optimization strategies that you could follow. And I'll close with some remarks and considerations when delivering optimization results to your clients. Moving on to the motivation. So the idea here is that companies can maximize profit as a function of the pricing and the composition of their product portfolio. And this is done by every single uh, selling channel that they operate within. Um, so as uh, recent consultancy studies have proved, pricing is probably the most powerful lever to drive profitability. So this is uh, increasingly important for companies to manage their pricing appropriately. Uh, a second motivation, and it's more internal for us, is that this RO uh, mindset allows us to turn data into actionable foresight tools for clients. And this helps us determine what is the optimal pricing and portfolio strategy within a number of given constraints, and we'll talk about this later. The constraints are really important. Some of the pioneers in RO are basically the fixed capacity industries. Think about hotels, airliners, car rentals, and even sporting and entertainment venues. Basically, they have a fixed number of seats available, uh, fixed capacity, and they need to find the best possible way to fill in those seats at the maximum price possible. So what is revenue optimization? Uh, what is the principle behind it? The idea is how to charge the maximum willingness to pay to each customer. Uh, here I have a visual representation. I have a demand as a function of price. It's a linear demand. And what you see here is that if you sell a product for $10, you get a demand of 1,000, and you get a profit represented by the area uh, A. And that's assuming a $5 marginal cost. What happens then is that you have missed uh, profit opportunities uh, represented by B and C. Uh, so consumers in B would be willing to pay a little bit more than the $10, and yet you're leaving that money on the table. And consumers in C are able to pay uh, a, higher, a higher price than your marginal cost, but lower than the $10, so you're missing those. Uh, so the solution for this uh, problem is uh, basically price differentiation, sometimes called price discrimination. Um, it can sometimes be controversial, like in the case of the smart vending machines from Coca-Cola that I'll explain later. But there are some uh, well-accepted techniques of price differentiation. Think about ladies' night. That's a gender-based uh, differentiation. Let's think about the discounts that senior or kids might get. That's an age-based differentiation. Think about outlets. So driving to an out-of-the-way location to get a bargain uh, for, for a fancy brand, that's a geographic uh, differentiation. And in CPG, the most prevalent one is product versioning. Think about the price quality tiers that are available when you buy uh, anything from soap to, to you know, blades and razors. Um, so let's move on now to what is required from market research as a function to do research um, revenue optimization. You've got to go from a paradigm of insight into foresight. And here I want to share uh, some findings from a recent BCG study, the Boston Consulting Group. Uh, they released these. Um, findings from a Consumer Insight benchmark, Benchmarking Study they conducted in 2009. 
and they say that there's four stages of development for the consumer insight function, all the way from an order taking function to a source of competitive advantage, the, the, the strategic foresight organization. It really takes that mindset to do, to do revenue optimization effectively. You have to uh, make sure that the right stakeholders uh, are, are involved. You, you have to have the, the right sources of data, integrate them, design research that is uh, able to, to understand what are the consumer preferences and basically forecast how consumers respond to future scenarios or market conditions. So the building blocks of a revenue optimization system are basically three. The first one is you need to have quantitative models of consumer behavior uh, and we typically use choice-based conjoint to do so. You need to have a demand forecasting uh, as ability and we, we basically build a market simulator to do that. And the third piece is uh, you need to have a constraint optimization tool and we, we have developed some search algorithms that basically look for the optimal solution within market constraints. I'm going to talk a little bit more about these. The first one is choice-based conjoint. Um, so this is the consumer modeling piece. CBC is a proven and unbiased research technique that we can use to model consumer preferences and uh, it captures very well the market heterogeneity. Uh, CBC is rooted in utility theory that was put forward by von Neumann and Morgenstern uh, Few decades ago. Uh, but the nice thing about conjoined is that it, it has evolved over time and now the estimation process of the, of the preferences or the utilities as, as we like to call it has evolved over time. Uh, at the beginning it was a one-size-fits-all model so for your whole sample you would have one set of utilities, one set of preferences. Then uh, we moved on into latent class which allows you to work with segments and now as of recent past decade or so we work with a hierarchical base which allows you to uh, estimate utilities at the individual level. Um, the respondents basically go through a number of tasks uh, that resemble their purchase behavior process and here I show uh, a sample of those. Here we have blades and razors, uh, hair color and uh, body wash and the important thing here is that this is always done in a competitive con uh, context. Even if you do a new product uh, research, you got to have your competitive context will be the, the status quo of whatever the consumer is using at that point. So you've got to always give that option to them. It makes it more realistic and more accurate. The second piece, the market simulator, demand forecasting. You've got to go from the consumer preferences to market shares and from market shares to revenue forecasting. So there's a lot of volumetric adjustments that we do. And here I have a depiction here of the, of the tool. Um, you, it's basically a very easy to use tool. You have inputs and outputs. You can input your prices. You can change the portfolio composition. And uh, as a result, you will get market shares and revenue outputs. And obviously, this will change. Um, you think about what you can do with this is that you can basically test unlimited strategies in terms of pricing and portfolio composition and even test for competitive reactions. Um, in, in its simplest form, the simulator, what it really is, it's a show of hands from respondents given a number of choice options. The third part of uh, revenue optimization is actually searching for the optimal. So you have your simulator there but that doesn't tell you what is the optimal solution for your client. So you first got to define what is your feasible uh, space of solutions. And you have the, the large rectangle represents the total space of possible solutions. Uh, but then you want to make sure that you constrain that space to only feasible solutions. And feasible solutions means feasible solutions for your client. Uh, there might be a number of constraints that, that they really care about. It could be min and max prices. It could be I want the prices to be ending in 99 cents. Uh, there might be a price parity between brands. 
Uh, there might be line pricing between line extensions. Um, there might be a maximum or minimum discount allowed for larger sizes. There's there there's a myriad of different constraints that they might they may impose. Once you have that, then you can sample a number of solutions within these constraints. And after you do that, you have your space of solu feasible solutions. You have your, your sample there. Uh, all you need to do is define the objective function, which in this case is uh, is revenue, and this is the function that you want to maximize. And then you apply the search algorithm. And in this case, we we, we compute what is a revenue for each of these uh, options that we laid out in a, in a grid form. And you see here that it's easy to identify what is the solution within that space that maximizes revenue in the, in the dark blue. There are a number of search algorithms available, but I won't uh, get into those uh, for this conference. Um, but it's not about finding the winning solution only. It's also about the patterns that you observe throughout uh, the optimization. So in this example that I'm sharing here, I'm plotting all the solutions that we, uh, that we recreated, and it's basically 80,000 scenarios that we generated. And we plot them in terms of the revenue and the volume. What you see is that 40% of these solutions actually gain in both revenue and share. That's the upper right quadrant of the graph here. You see the little red spot there is the, the one solution that provides you with the highest maximum uh, revenue gain of 8%. But you've got to ask your question, ask a question about why is that the best possible solution? What is in that particular pricing or comp portfolio composition that makes it a winning proposition. Uh, and are there any alternate strategies that, it, that are worth considering? Some um, examples or uh, of some strategies that you could use uh, to in, in your revenue optimization process is you could you could think about maximizing volume share profitably. And what that means is that you cap the revenue loss, the potential revenue loss, because it's very easy to maximize volume by just lowering the price, but it might not be profitable. So this first one is what I call a, a balanced investment in growing your customer base, but in a sensible way uh, to finance. Uh, the second option is maximize revenue while capping volume loss. Uh, Typically, finance will, will want to jack up the prices to boost their, uh, their profit, but what typically happens is that volume goes down, uh, so you might end up in a situation where it's, uh, you lose profitability. So maximizing revenue while capping volume loss, it's, it's the ideal situation. It's not always feasible because it will depend on the price elasticity in the market. And then you can also play some game uh, game theory strategy. So you can uh, think about uh, what will be the optimal competitive reaction to my optimal uh, configuration. So that way you, you, you can rethink your strategy if you, if you think, if you see, for example, that the, the best possible reaction for competition is to engage in a price war. So maybe that you can reconsider your options. Finally, um, I want to close with some uh, considerations and remarks on how to make a, a successful deployment of, uh, of revenue optimization results. Uh, the first thing, very important, you got to involve the key stakeholders from the different functions early in the game. So it's not just about talking to, uh, to your market research uh, contact. You've got to have uh, people from finance, from marketing, from sales, and obviously from, from, from market research. Um, you've got to plan accordingly. You need to have a kickoff meeting where all the constraints are laid out. The constraints are so important. Uh, without them, the results are simply not applicable. Um, and the, when you actually deliver those results, you want to do it in a workshop style, uh, ideally. Uh, so it's more of a dynamic session where you have tools that the clients can use to interact with the data, with the different scenarios, so they can activate and deactivate constraints, they can rank and select different scenarios, they can discuss around that. Um, 
one uh, advice is that don't ever be afraid to show the, the raw data. Um, involve the stakeholders in the analysis because then they will feel uh, owners of the solution. And as always, you've got to be clear about what are the model assumptions and limitations. A model is as good as the assumptions that are behind it, so you've got to be clear about this. Thank you very much today, and I'm open for uh, getting any questions.